the aardvark, an anteater with the snout of a pig, the ears of a rabbit, and the tail of a kangaroo. They can weigh as much as a human. Aardvark burrows are often taken over by the honey badger. But the honey badger doesn't give a damn. He's such a badass. But for one of South Africa's oddballs, its protective burrow is turning into its tomb. You won't believe what I'm going to do. I'm going to go and rehouse a spider. We need that. You need a big knife. We need a big okay. knife. This is Donald. Please. Donald Stridon. And Donald's the patron saint of this spider. We're going to do some aggressive research. Aggressive research? We're going to need the relevant equipment here. Donald served in the South African Army and is ruthlessly Miles. efficient. You don't want to leave anything behind. You don't want to, you don't want to leave anything no, behind, no. no. He's stuck in the bush somewhere. The spider we're after is known as a tarantula in most of the world. Here, it's called a baboon spider. We have water containers, yes, check. Let's take some weather monitoring equipment. Do you need gloves? Uh, I, uh... We need to get camera, GPS, uh, we don't need gloves. OK. Spider safari. Yeah. So these spiders, they only really live in, in this area around here. About 150 kilometre radius from where we are now, and that's it. The only yeah. place in the world that you find this spider. That's the problem. Throughout southern Africa, tiny areas are home to unique animals found there and nowhere else in the world like the sun gazer, the cape vulture, and the golden brown baboon spider. Unfortunately, the spider likes a kind of soil also popular with home builders, and it refuses to move, even when the bulldozers come. It's going to tuck down right under there in a panic, and as soon as they cover it over, slow, slow, terrible death. So we, we absolutely need to move it. So this is an emergency situation. Yeah, this is one. Is it? So that's okay. where the spider is. Now, golden brown baboon spiders need very special attention. They're very finicky, and we have to be finicky too. So the technique of capturing the spider is not to make too much disturbance so that we don't spook the spider. The first step is to lure this very sensitive spider out of its hole. Now, Donald has thought this through and has developed a special method, haven't mm -hmm. you, which yep. involves faking a rainstorm. Here comes our rainstorm. You've got to make thunder sounds, eh? <laughs> That's it, perfect. Just carry on like that. Kay's coming out. She, she's coming. She's coming. There we go. You're doing such a good job. So there she is. South Africa's fussy freak emerges. OK, so Donald's actually blocking its entrance with the knife so that it's now trapped in its porch, basically. It's probably about a 15-year-old spider. 15-year-old spider? Who yeah, knew? In 15 years, she hasn't really left that no. burrow. Mm -hmm. Wow, OK, mm -hmm. so this is a big moment for this spider. I'll try and get this with my camera. You've got to be so gentle with them. The hair is covering the body. Every about 20th hair is a sensory hair, so they touch things and feel things with that hair. There we go. Beautiful. She's lovely. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. She's kind of on your hand already. Is she really already? Yeah, you hardly feel it. You know? I can feel it, yeah. I... Wow. I'm slightly worried she's going to run into my shirt no, sleeve. She won't run too fast. How long does it take for the spider to, to build this hole? It took it about five to seven years. That's incredible. I totally understand why it wouldn't want to move. The hole is the spider's life's work. It won't simply dig another once we move it. So that's half the job. Less than half. We need to get a mould of that hole. If you don't shake it properly, it doesn't foam nicely. Yeah. Now Donald is making it his life's go, work go, go. to figure out exactly what the spider likes. That's it. Ooh. OK, we need to get a GPS right. reading here. We need to get weather conditions. Donald's quite serious. Degrees, 22 minutes. minutes. So um, how many spiders do you think in total there need to be relocated here? By looking at the, the map and how many houses are going to be built here, 
uh, with each house, there could be at least maybe two or three spiders. So multiplied by 200, 300 houses. It's a lot of work. Donald could end up doing this a thousand times. Meanwhile, our finicky baboon spider still needs a new home. We should use, use this area. This is our spider's home. This is what was underneath. And we're going to start making a hole for her in the hope that she'll continue and make the rest of the boot. Yep, exactly. Mm. Okay, so what direction? We were 24. <laughs> what do you say about that spot? Donald has learnt to be as fussy as a spider, having to try and rehouse. How many have you tried? And I hate to say failed, but I mean it's... <laughs> Probably about uh, close to 50 that we've, we've worked with. Two, five, zero. Yeah. 50. Of the 50 spiders, just one has accepted its new home. Right. Uh, we have a whole bunch here that we have in captivity. They're all waiting for homes until we find what the recipe is. And you've got to be very careful about what you're doing here, ma'am. Really? You see, yeah, you what scrape, you're scraping the hole wider and wider. Oh That's no good. God. You see what you've done there? You've messed it. I have. Oh my God, I've ruined it. So I have to start a new hole. Okay, now look what I'm doing. The spoon has been taken away from me and handed back to the master. There's only one master. That's that's the master. Such love. Would you like to do the honors? I would love to do the honors. So I'll just put it straight yeah. into your hand. Okay. She is a really beautiful spider, actually. OK, so I'm going to try her face first. Let me see if she accepts it. <laughs> New home. Did you just okay. realise there's something there? There's something there. We can just guide her. We'll have to guide her because it's okay. not at home. Is she going to accept into it? Into your hole? Hey! He's accepting it. <laughs> Well done. Oh, excellent. That's so cool. I'm so happy. If all goes well, she'll be here for another decade, where her reclusive life won't get her into any trouble. Well, only another 999 to go. I'm betting Donald will move every single one. The spider would be helpless without Donald. But the last freaks on my safari help each other. And they're paying a steep price for it. They're bold creatures, far stronger and more agile than humans, with fangs longer than a leopard's. But it's the Chukma baboon's brain power that gets him in trouble. They can work together in raiding parties of as many as a hundred. Not the kind of creature you want to come home to. Unless you're this guy. Yeah, that one looks like he's really quite pleased to see me. The penal display. Just go inside. Go inside? Yeah. OK, all right. Hello, guys. Matthew and I are becoming friends, aren't we, Matthew? Yeah? You like, you like what you see? When baboons clash with humans, Bob rescues them. You are a naughty baboon. Yeah, you are a naughty baboon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've only just met Bob, but he seems to be half baboon himself. I've been crapped on. Oh, God. Once you're back home, you're going to miss the smell. Really? Do you know what, Bob? I, I struggle to believe that. <laughs> <laughs> So where did these babies come from? Matthew had been saved from a tribal medicinal trade. Others were orphaned when their mothers were shot. They've had a narrow escape, haven't they? Today, many of Bob's baboons are supposed to go back to the wild. But it's something he's never tried to do before. I'm going to help relocate almost 20 baboons. It's an event Bob has worked towards for decades as he's learned to forge rescued animals into one cohesive troop. It's a massive day for Bob today. Like a sort of baboon wizard, he's collected a group of unloved baboons that have all come from 
different horrific situations and rehabilitated them here. And today's the day that we're going to dart them and move them to their new enclosure. It's the final step before these exceptionally smart animals are released for good. Oh, here they are. Wow. Look at these eyebrows now. Yeah, his Take eyebrows it. are wagging up and down. Yeah, we believe that they are real um, psychological experts. Make eye contact and they can reach your soul. Scary prospect. <laughs> <laughs> Baboons are very social, but creating a troop from scratch is not easy. You need the right mix. After years of trial and error, Bob's finally found it. Just recently, this group has come together to raise their newest member. There she's now there. You can see her there oh, with a the baby. You can see Daisy with yeah. a baby, yeah. When she came in, she was exactly the size of a baby. No, yes. really? Yeah, now she's going to be... I want to cry. I was going to say, Paul. She's going to be released now with her own baby. Oh, that's amazing. It's going to be an intense day. Now we have to outsmart them. Easier said than done. Know that they're very intelligent. Mm. They will know quickly what we're up to. And you must be alert. They are potentially very dangerous animals. OK. I feel quite nervous, actually, because these are big animals. We don't want things to go wrong. First, we lure the animals into a smaller enclosure to sedate them. It's great. Look at that. Look at that. It's great. Is he going to go in? Looks like I've got a shoulder. He's gone in. One of the lead males that we really wanted to get into the cage early on. We've got him in the cage. Then we get Daisy and the baby. Come on, two more, two more, just two more. Two more. Okay. There you go. Got it? Yeah. Bye. We've managed to get eight. Eight. We've got eight. Yeah. He's so jittery about seeing a gun, mm. you know, because um, they've been shot at so many times. And... Mm. Some farmers here shoot to kill any baboon they spot on their property. We want to capture the big male first, or he could make things more difficult. Go for it. Baboons are known to form really strong friendships. I think it's very sweet the way they're all cuddled up next to each other to go to sleep. OK, so now they're under. It's safe for us to go in. To get to the sedated animals, the team has to enter the larger pen, where the rest of the troop is anxiously watching. We're going to get them out as soon as possible. But stand by, Lucy. If something happens, you must pull at the door. OK. okay. <laughs> Hear that? The minute that the baby starts crying, they will... Oh, they can tell something's going on. Yeah, they're going crazy because it's the baby. Now, with the baby making the sounds, then we must take them out immediately. I've got it, yeah, OK. <laughs> We take away their leader, and the troop really goes berserk. Once strangers, these baboons will now do anything to protect one another. And that includes taking us on. It takes half a day, but we manage to sedate the troop. Ooh. OK, there you go, Bob. Yeah, go on. Yeah, go, go, go. Yeah, yeah, OK. He's left, left a message behind. OK. 
Okay. Um, Each gets a thorough that. medical checkup to make sure it's healthy enough to survive in the wild. It's a lot softer than you'd expect, given that they walk on their hands all day long. Baboons have evolved to forage on the ground because of Southern Africa's lack of forest. Some think that's also why they have such huge canines to fend off predators. Whoa, look okay, at that. This is for the canine. You can feel the back part of it, yeah. Oh, okay. I can feel that. Behind that tooth is razor okay. sharp. Uh, wow. Okay, can you hold it, please? Oh, my word. You got it? Yeah, I got him, yeah. Okay. At last, they're ready to go. So we're putting the baboons in these boxes so that they can be easily transported to the site where we're going to release them. What's going on, eh? You and Mum are going to wake up somewhere completely new and then you're going to be wild. You're going to grow up to be a wild baboon. Yeah, that is. OK, there we are. Right. Well done. First stage, all yeah. good. Bob has found the baboons a home on a nature reserve 80 kilometers from the nearest town. This is the new home. Have you chosen baboon heaven? Absolutely. This is the ultimate baboon habitat. Yeah. We need to make sure the baboons will stay together. So we'll first release them into a temporary electrified enclosure. That's just so that they get used to this area and stay as a group. And then, after a couple of weeks, they'll turn the electricity off build some bridges so that they can then expand beyond the fence and then eventually the fences will come down and it'll just be them in the wilderness. Here comes the big boy. Look at them pulling the pipe. The baboon's got hold of the pipe. <laughs> 19 baboons in these boxes that would have died or led some horrible grim existence as pets and they are about to have their first taste of freedom. And everybody's very excited. No one here has ever done this before. Yeah. We've got Daisy and the baby in here, and they're gonna go in first. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Here comes Daisy, guys. Here comes Daisy. Woo, there she goes. They're kind of looking around like, what the hell happened there? <laughs> Three, two, one. Look at that. That emotion is running very high. Yeah. There you go. Yes, look at that. These ones are lively. It's not just the humans who are emotional. The baboons in there can see that there are other baboons that are free on the other side, so it's all getting a lot more exciting now. Wait, wait, there's a baboon coming. Oh, very quick, very quick, very quick, 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 quick. We released the entire troop without a hitch. Two more happy customers. Well, almost the entire troop. He's not going quietly. We've got to get Matthew out. Whoa, whoa! Are you ready, guys? This is the alpha. Look at that. He's the last one. The last one to go out. Yeah. Look at that side, Lucy. Look at them. They are all happy. They're really happy, aren't all they? All the talking going on there. It's like the first step into the big world. Yeah. A new world for them, a new experience and freedom. Everybody thinks their society is based on aggression, but it just isn't, is it? It's not. It's not. It's about care. This is a group of animals that come from as far as a thousand kilometers away from each other, and yet they form this incredibly tight family group now, and they'll do anything to protect each other. Oh, it's hard. You can't not be moved by this, can you? You know, it's like, it's an amazing... Amazing moment. To survive in the bush, these baboons will need every bit of their extraordinary ingenuity. But 
here, they'll be far away from the human influence that turns their strange asset into a liability. Like the rest of South Africa's Freaky Five, their oddness works in this wilderness. And it's here we can see they're all as wonderful as they are weird.